What is the biblical definition of favor and how do we activate it in our lives? Pastor Lawson Purdue knows something about favor and he joins us with some answers. Welcome back to the Harvest Show, Bless Pastor. You. Okay, uncommon favor. We're going to talk about that first, though. I want to ask you about your connection with Lassie Broadcasting. You have had the privilege of knowing or you knew uh, our late founder, Dr. Lester Summerall. I never got a chance to meet him. What was it like working with him? It was really special. Uh -huh. And I believe ultimately God called me to go to Bible school here at World Harvest Bible College then. Uh, later became Indiana Christian University. Uh, I was 16 years old. I was reading a book by Dr. Summerall, Miracles Don't Just Happen. And when I was reading that book, I remember I was sitting in my mom's trailer house, sitting in the, in the corner in a chair, and, and there was an ad about the Bible school. And my mom walked over and she said, maybe you're supposed to go to his Bible school. And it's like the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, you're supposed to go to that Bible school. <laughs> my grandparents wanted me to go to ORU. Mm -hmm. Other people wanted me to go to Ramah. And I went and visited those schools, but God didn't tell me to go there. But I came here and visited the school and actually uh, came here when I was 22 and 23 years old and uh, graduated from the school with my two-year degree and then went and started a church in eastern Colorado. And then after I started the church, I finished my four-year degree by correspondence and came here every year. Uh, Dr. Sumrall came and dedicated our church that we started when we built a building mm -hmm. and had a very special relationship. And he came then just six months before he passed away. He came in October 31st, our church again. Okay, and you say that he said to you, God gives favor, don't ever forget it. That's what we're talking about, godly favor. What is favor? Favor really is talking about the grace of God. It's mm -hmm. talking about just God's goodness and God's blessing to us as believers. And favor is available really to everyone, the Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God. That's really talking about the divine favor of God. You're saved by God's favor. You're not saved because of what you did, but you're saved because of who you believed. Okay, is there a difference between God's favor and favoritism? Yes, I believe okay. there is. Mm -hmm. I believe, um, you know, my wife says, I'm God's favorite. <laughs> I say I have God's favor because favor is really available to everybody and in the person of Jesus. And when you believe on Jesus, God's grace, God's favor, God's ability is available to you as a believer. And what does that look like in everyday life when, you know, does that mean I can just command God to do something for me or give me a favor, God, so that I can make more money or have well, more prestige? What exactly is it? Well, I think, you know, when you talk about the grace and the favor of God, mm -hmm. there is an aspect of blessing. In fact, if you study the uh, scripture in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6, where it says he's, uh, we're called to his purpose in verse 5, but then he says, to the praise of the glory of his grace or his favor. That word grace in Ephesians 1, 6 means uh, that we, it's the divine condition of one who's governed by grace or mm -hmm. governed by the favor of God. But then he says, in the very last part of that verse, wherein when we come to f a fixed position of rest in the favor of God, he has made us accepted in the beloved. The word for made accepted in the Greek is the actually verb form of charis, kerido, and it means that God pursues us with his favor. And as you study it out in the Greek, it means this, being pursued by favor, that we're surrounded by grace, that we're highly favored and that we're honored with blessing. And I've found grace is not only good for my forgiveness, it's good for my freedom, for my prosperity, for my peace, for my protection. The Greek word for salvation, soteria, is, really includes all those things if you study it out in, in the Strong's Concordance. Forgiveness, freedom, prosperity, peace, protection, all of those things are part of God's grace that we receive. We receive everything that we receive as far as the promises of God by the grace of God. It's, it's not by our works. It's such, that's what I was about to say. It's such a liberating message because we don't have to do anything. God loves us. And when you said that part about he pursues us with his favor, I mean, you know, sometimes you, don't, you just don't feel worthy of the grace of God, but it's the, the, the enabler that allows us to live this Christian life, His right. grace. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So grace isn't only divine favor, divine influence, but it's divine ability. It's God's ability working in you. 
and he does pursue us. Now, we have to answer that by faith. And really, grace is what God's done for us. Faith is our positive response towards the gospel, towards what God's done for us in the person of Jesus. And I'd imagine, I mean, this is your life story, Uncommon Favor is your personal story. But as you talk about Uncommon Favor, you talk about the responsibility also of what God has given, the grace that he's given to you. As a result, you've gone on to share the message of Jesus Christ through your churches and ministries. Kind of talk about that, how that favor benefits someone else or the body of Christ at large. Well, Dr. Sumrall asked me, how did you build your church, my first church, with that he came and dedicated? How did you do this so quick? It's amazing. I said, I've had a lot of favor. And he looked across the back seat of the car at me and he said, God gives favor. Don't you ever forget it. Now, <laughs> okay. I don't you know if he said it like that. Him. No, you sound I don't know if he like said him. it like that or the Holy Spirit just amplified that on the inside <laughs> of me, but I've never forgotten it. Praise God. And then I used to teach a class at Karis Bible College in Colorado called the favor of God. And one of my good friends that's in the church, and he's actually works at a ministry and oversees a hundred people that he manages. He said, Lawson, that ought to be the story of your life. Your life reeks of favor. And praise God, we had a lot of favor there. And then we went to Colorado Springs and started a church. And I prayed from the beginning, God, I thank you for favor. I thank you for favor with the, you know, governmental leaders in the city, financial leaders, business leaders. I thank you, Father, for favor with spiritual leaders. And we have had tremendous, tremendous favor. The favor of God surrounds my life. The favor of God's on everything I do. Praise God. I'm blessed and highly favored by God, but it's available for everybody mm -hmm. in Jesus. And I, I just like that fact. I'd like to go back to it. The fact that you cannot earn it. You, it's um, when you become a son or a daughter of Jesus Christ, it's given to us. It's available to us. And if we yield our lives to him, he will right. activate it in our lives. It's available to everybody. You know, Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, mm -hmm. uh, verse 10, he was talking there about the apostles and that they had seen Jesus. And he was defending his own apostleship. The devil was trying to condemn him for what he did before he received Christ as his savior. Had Christians killed, you know, because of his zeal for God. But then you know, he caught himself and he said, I am who I am. I am what I am by the grace of God. It wasn't bestowed on me in vain. I labored more abundantly than they all. But he says, it was not me. It was the grace of God that was with me. Thank God for the grace of God that's with us that helps us do ultimately what God's called us to do, whether it's in business, mm -hmm. whether it's in ministry, whether it's in our family. It's the grace of God that helps us be a great witness in this world. Well, Pastor Purdue, I'm going to give you the last minute to pray for people. Would you pray um, that they too will allow God to shower them with his grace? Because sometimes we feel so unworthy of his grace that we kind of just, you know, count ourselves out before he can even work in our lives. Well, no one's worthy, but mm -hmm. Jesus made us worthy. And we're worthy because of what Jesus' blood has done for us. We don't receive it because of our goodness, we receive it because of the goodness of God revealed to us in Jesus. So pray with me right now. Heavenly Father, I come to you right now. I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe that he died for my forgiveness and my freedom. And right now, Heavenly Father, I receive Jesus as my Savior. And Jesus, I ask you to strengthen me and to live your life through me. Lord Jesus, I live for you as you give me the strength. And thank you, Heavenly Father, for your blessing on me through Jesus Christ. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And for more information on Uncommon Favor or to get a copy of it, just go to LawsonPurdue.com or go to Harvest-TV.com for more information. Harvest continues in just a moment. <laughs> 